so now enzymes enzyme they are the protein in nature right uh, except the catalytic RNA catalytic RNA is not protein in nature the molecular weight of enzymes uh, ranges from 12,000 to 1 million basically proteins are weighed in kilodaltons now let me introduce to you the two new terms that is cofactor and coenzymes right every enzyme in order to uh, undergo its activity it requires some metal ion right and this metal ion uh, binds at the active side of the enzyme and it helps for the catalytic activity of the enzymes right and such ions right chemical components they are called as a cofactor right uh, either one of the more inorganic ions such as the fe plus 2 mg plus 2 mn plus 2 or zn plus 2 these are the various uh, inorganic ions that have been required right for the activity of the enzyme once they bind to the enzyme right they help to increase the catalytic activity of the enzyme or in some cases they may make the enzyme active right another is coenzyme what do you mean uh, what is the difference in cofactor and a coenzyme cofactor in which various metal ions have been included right in coenzyme there is a complex organic or uh, metal organic molecules right required for the enzyme it they can be either the various organic molecules complex uh, for example we talk of dna polymerase uh, in our human right so it requires some factor right for its catalytic activity right and that is the example of coenzymes the factor has been required for the activity of the dna polymerase right uh, is, is the example of coenzyme right so the coenzyme act as a transient carrier of specific functional group for example uh, if the enzyme re requires acetyl group right for its activity so this coenzyme may helps to transfer the acetyl group right from some other molecule to the active site of the enzyme by then you are getting it right so now here the image is uh, here you are seeing the cytochrome oxidase is an enzyme right it requires cu plus 2 as a cofactor similarly you are having various enzyme right uh, peroxidase pyruvate kinase dinitrogenase urease right these are the various enzymes for which various cofactors have been required in the presence of these cofactors right these enzymes shows its catalytic activity either the catalytic activity get increased or the enzyme becomes active let me introduce you some uh, more terms right uh, prostatic group and hollow enzyme so coenzyme or metal enzyme metal ion that is very uh, tightly bound to the enzyme protein is called as a prostatic group right so metal ion that is mn plus 2 right if it is bound to some of the enzyme so this mn plus 2 is called as a prostatic group hollow enzyme a complete catalytic active enzyme together with this so once uh, we get bound one, once we have the enzyme and its cofactor bound right the whole core structure is called as a hollow enzyme so that is so this is your enzyme right this is in the inactive form right so once this metal ion is being binding at the catalytic active side of the enzyme right and this whole complex is in form of, uh, that is enzyme and the metal ion that is called as a hollow enzyme classification of enzymes so every enzymes uh, it ends with an uh, ace right and the enzymes have been named after the catalytic activity they carry out for example those carry out hydrolysis they are called as a hydrolysis those they call, uh, carry out the redox they can be called as a oxido reductase that is a transfer of electrons transfer is they transfer the reaction hydrolysis because it's a hydrolysis reaction lyases addition of the group to double bond or the formation of the double bond by the removal of the group right isomerases right they transfer the uh, okay isomerases they transfer the group within the molecules to yield the isomeric form ligases right the formation of the cc cs co so these are they ligate ligases means they will ligate something so they will form either cc bond cs form co bond cn bond right by the condensation reaction coupled to the atp cleavage right now, now you see note this most enzyme catalyze the transfer of electrons atoms of functional group 
they are therefore classified given code number and assign name according to the type of transfer reaction the group donor and the group acceptor so based on this uh, for example uh, they are uh, they are saying this they have been classified given code number and assign names according to the type of transfer reaction the group donor and the group acceptor for example uh, we have a uh, pyruvate dehydrogenase right pyruvate dehydrogenase is an enzyme right so what it will do it will dehydrogenate pyruvate moiety what kind of reaction is doing is doing the dehydrogenation reaction from where he is doing group donor is here is pyruvate right so that's why it is named as a pyruvate dehydrogenase right so like this way they have been named according to the transfer reaction the group donor and the group acceptor now let us go to the active side of an enzyme uh, the enzyme catalyzes reactions that it takes place within the confine of a pocket on the enzyme the collective side so a reaction in enzyme it takes place at a particular position right the position at where the enzyme reaction takes place is the active side and this active side is been linked so this is a, a substrate and this is an enzyme this whole blue one is enzyme this is a substrate right so this substrate is been bound in the active side so this is the active side where the substrate is been binding right and these are the various amino acid that is been linked to the substitution group that binds to the substrate and that helps in the catalyzing the reaction right so this enzyme this chymotrypsin right this is a substrate is been bound and this is a amino acid right these are the various amino acid chain right that uh, that that have been uh, useful for the catalytic transformation now let us come to how does an enzyme uh, works right the function of the enzyme is to increase the rate of reaction right so here the reaction is e plus s it is an enzyme plus substrate it forms a uh, intermediate that is enzyme substrate complex this intermediate gets formed into product that is ep intermediate enzyme and product and once of this intermediate is in form they are uh, then the enzyme and product is been then uh, cleave this enzyme then binds to the other substrate in the cycle continues right now ground state right the starting point that is a starting point this from here the reaction is been starting for either the forward or the reverse reverse reaction is called as the ground state and the contribution of the free energy of the system by an average molecule under given set of conditions so this is a ground state from where the reaction is been starting right so uh, you are seeing this uh, delta g s p right so this is a ground state uh, how much energy is been required to go from the ground state to the transition state right so it indicates this this delta g p s right that uh, it indicates how much energy has been required to come from the transition state to the ground state right so this is this so this is a uh, this is a ground state from where the reaction is been starting so now this is the energy barrier energy uh, because for an enzyme to start initial the reaction it has to overcome from here it has uh, to go to the transition state so it re it requires the energy right to go from the ground state to the transition state and why it requires energy because during this reaction right there are the various uh, formation of unstable charges bond rearrangement other transformation required for the reaction to proceed in the either direction for example there can be transfer of some various functional groups bond rearrangement can be there hydrogen bond is been placed from uh, some specific position right so these are the various bond rearrangement that have been required right and for a reaction for the substrate to come into product right this rearrangements uh, are uh, rearrangement have been necessary and for uh, for this the molecule has to undergo this energy barrier to overcome this energy barrier right that is it has to uh, go, uh, overcome from the ground state return to the uh, go to the transition state and again return to the ground state right so this is the energy barrier that it has to overcome this right and this can be done with the help of the enzyme right right and this can be done with the help of the enzyme 
now the difference between this uh, energy required to go to the uh, transition state and return to the ground state right this difference it is the activation energy right and this activation energy it uh, it shows that a higher activation energy corresponds to a slower reaction right for example if this ground state transition state and after returning to the ground state p is very 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 downward side it means it is been taking more time to convert into the product right now role of enzymes so reaction rate can be increased by raising the temperature where we increase the number of molecules with sufficient energy to overcome the energy barrier alternately the reactivation energy can be lowered we are lowering the activation energy right by adding a catalyst catalyst enhances the rate of reaction by lowering the lowering the activation energies so we saw that the uh, formation of the various uh, transition uh, trans uh, intermediates right and any any reaction have a several step forming the formation and decaying of the transient chemical species called the reaction intermediates for example we saw enzyme per substrate it forms enzyme substrate intermediate this then forms enzyme product intermediates right so these are the various reaction intermediates that have been formed right and a reaction intermediate is any species on the reaction part that is a chemical a finite chemical lifetime it usually uh, ranges to 10 to 13 seconds right so when several steps occur in a reaction the overall rate is determined by the step or steps with the highest activation energy and it is called as a rate limiting step so what is a rate limiting step the step in which the activation energy is the highest right there are various intermediate for example uh, in a reaction there are to convert a substrate into product there are five intermediates for example right now conversion of first to second is having the least intermediate right whereas third fourth fifth intermediate that have been formed they are having the highest activation energy or similar activation energy so at that time the third fourth fifth are called as a rate limiting step for the reaction so this is the last part of today's uh, presentation uh, in the coming slides we are going to see much more enzyme in detail so today we are just having a very basic view of enzymes in the upcoming videos are going to have a very nice view we are going to go in the depth of enzymes so we are seeing equilibrium such as substrate of product is described by an equilibrium constant k eq where the k eq is concentration of product by concentration of substrate right and another standard condition equilibrium constant denoted by k eq so this relationship that delta g is minus rt ln k eq is very important right many times in many competitive exam various uh, questions have been asked based on this uh, equations and in upcoming videos we are going to solve various problems also based on this all concepts right so where r is a gas constant with 8.315 joule per mole into kelvin t is absolute temperature 298 kelvin right and uh, you can see here uh, the equilibrium constant is directly related to the overall standard free energy chain of the reaction for example if the equilibrium constant is more it means that a uh, product concentration is more right so you are going to have a more standard free energy right so a large negative value for delta g uh, reflects a favorable reaction equilibrium but it does not mean the reaction will proceed at a rapid rate so if you are having a large value of delta g it means you are having a large value of delta eq a uh, large product product concentration right that it means that a higher favorable reactions right but it does not mean the reaction will be a rapid rate rate may be slow but we are having a favorable reaction so this is just a basic introduction to enzyme in the upcoming videos we will see binding energy importance michael mantel equation very important specificity of enzymes type of enzyme inhibition how the different enzyme catalysis general acid base catalysis uh, metal ion catalysis various enzyme catalysis we will see various enzymes and their function lysozyme myoglobulin various proteins we will see uh, reference uh, you again we have solved with laringer principle of biochemistry fourth edition uh, 
so that's all for today thank you please share this and upcoming videos see you soon